Hello, hello, this is Brian from Tavarn Games here with episode 5 in our tutorial series on creating a strategy map generator in Unity. So in this episode, I would like to cover generating hills, which can appear on any tile type, so the desert, the plains, the grassland, uh, as well as on the Arctic, except for the mountains, since they're bigger than hills, as well as creating forests, which can appear on the plains and on the grasslands, but being more common on the grasslands than on the plains, and then finally generating the mountain ranges themselves. So in order to do that, let's go back to our tutorial version and let's in the art folder, I've added in hill and tree art. Now these sprites are the same size as the tiles, 100 pixels wide by 115 tall, and we're sort of drawn on top of the tiles. These are of course just ugly placeholder art, but they will do the trick for now. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to our resources and open up our hexagon uh, and look at it in scene view. So we're going to want to drag our hills on top. So let's drag that in. Let's make sure it's positioned in the center and it's named hills correctly. And now we're going to change its order on layer to be one. The hex itself is ordered zero. And then if we make the hills order one, the hills will always appear on top of our hexagon. So we can use the order and layer for anything we want on the tile, be it the forest, resources, units, uh, cities, everything else can just go into a different order and that way everything will appear correctly in the game. So let's do the same for our trees. We'll drag that in, position it to zero, zero, so it's right in the center. And then we're gonna make this order three. So the way I think of it, the hills are at the bottom and then resources can go below the trees and then the trees on top. And then units and everything else would appear above that. Okay, so we have them in the right order. Now you can see they are black and white uh, in pictures, mostly white. And that is so we can change the color in the code. So you see if we drag around this color wheel, they change color. So for say the hills, uh, we're gonna want different colored hills based on the tile, Oop, wrong button. Uh, so like with a desert tile, we'd want these sort of more sandy colored hills and then greener for the plains tiles and then sort of a darker green heading into our grassland. And same thing with the forest, we want a different colored forest for our plains and our grassland. So we can set this in the code by using just one black and white picture for the hills and changing its color instead of creating a bunch of different pictures that we then have to swap through. Okay, so let's go to our code, uh, our tutorial code and the hex type. So we need to make the ability to um, not only set whether the trees uh, and hills are visible, but also set uh, their color and their visibility. So let's make a public sprite renderer. So this will be for, uh, the tree itself and we don't need the actual game object since we're just going to be manipulating the color and the opacity so players can see it and this is just going to be the trees and then we're going to want a bool for uh, whether there is a forest present we're going to call it forest so that it is different uh, in name and then we also want a second bool uh, I, I like to do this where I use a second bool called old whatever so old forest in this case and that way in the update function we can just check whether these two match or not, and then we can do the visibility for the trees, whether they're visible or not and what color they are based on the tile. So we can have the update updating it, but only when we need to. And then we're gonna want the same thing for our hills. Uh, so our sprite renderer for hills, and then we'll just do a hill uh, variable here, and then old hill. Okay, so we have all the variables we'll need. So let's stay in the code before we do anything else. So in the update, we're going to want to be checking if the old forest is, if it doesn't equal to forest, we're going to work on that. Uh, I got to spell things correctly. So in the case of if forest is equal to, uh, or if not forest, we'll start with the false case because this is easier. We're going to set it. So the uh, hill or trees, which is already a sprite render dot color is equal to new color 32 and we can just make this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. that's going to make it completely invisible uh, you can also like it's only the last one that has to be a zero the rest can be whatever you'd like but in this case we'll just make them all zero it's faster to type and then we'll have an else function and this time we'll have brackets because we're going to be checking the hex type so we're going to have type uh, in the cases that can have forest uh, for ours that is uh, equal to one which is our grassland so we need to pick a color to go on top of the grassland. That's going to be our darker green. So let's look at the trees and let's sort of look and maybe make it, that green looks pretty good. So about 50, 160, 50. We'll use that easy to remember. 
So back to the code, and we can just copy this and change the, you know, control V. So that's 50, 150, or uh, 160, I liked, and 50. And then for the opacity, 255. So that way it is visible. Okay, so we can copy this for the other types. Um, the other type that can have trees is going to be type 2, which is our planes. And in that case, we are going to want a lighter green um, with maybe a little bit more yellow to it. So it looks a bit closer to uh, the planes trees and maybe around there. So about 150, 240, 100 is close enough. So 150, 240, I believe it was, and 100. And again, 255 on the opacity. After we've done that, we're going to set forest equal or old forest equal to forest, wrong way, is equal to forest. And so this way it doesn't try to do it every single frame. Okay, so we're going to do a similar thing for the hills. So we can just copy this code because it's going to be very similar. We're just going to use a slightly different color or add in a color for the desert and a color for the uh, snow tiles. So in this case, though, old hill does not equal to hill uh, and then here we can change this to hill and of course we change this to hill as well uh, this one we don't need to change the color because this is the one where its opacity is oh sorry hills dot color and then hills here and hills here now type one and two those colors might be all right uh, we can go back in and check them out so let's look at the hills so for the grassland um, if we're going to try that 50, 160, and 50 again, uh, let's see what that looks like. And we can actually look at the hex behind and switch this over to that green. And that looks pretty good. It's quite similar. Okay. And now uh, for the um, planes tile, it was closer to over here. Uh, what was that? 150, 200, 100, I think it was. Something like that. And then change the color or the tile behind. Um, I don't exactly like that for the hills uh, on this tile. So, oh, where's that? Maybe a little more yellow, but not quite. We don't want it to look like a desert. Okay, that's pretty close. So, um, so we'll go with 170-220 in our tutorial uh, over here. So make sure we're under the hills. So 170-220-100 120, should be close. Okay, and now we have the desert, which is type equal to three. Oh, didn't need the brackets. Um, let's grab our color. So for the desert, we're looking for that sandy color. So let's go back. Let's go here. Let's make a desert. And then click on our hills and change up this color. So we want to be more in the yellow and maybe just a little bit lighter. And I think that looks pretty good. So 240, 240, 80 will be close enough. 40, 240, and 80. And then the last one is our snow tile. And the thing we know about snow tile is it's white. So we can just keep the hills white. Um, so five for the snow in our case. So 255 on everything. And that will show up nice and white. OK, so uh, last thing, old hill will now equal to hill. OK, so now we also need to make it so that whenever we change a tile, we're also going to be telling it to sort of reset. OK, um, the thing is, if a tile is already blank, we don't care. So we're going to set the old forest and the old hill to um, actually to the inverse whenever we do a swap type. Uh, that way it will um, change. So. We want to make it so that it's the opposite. So whenever we swap a type, we are force, going to force this to trigger. So if forest, old forest is equal to uh, false, and then else old forest is true. And then we want to do the same thing for hill. So if hill, um, old hill do -do -do, is equal to uh, false for that, and then else old hill is equal to true. So this way, when we actually swap the type of tile, we're automatically going to check if we need to update the forest and the hill function here. Um, and if we do need to, it's going to correct them uh, every time. So it might be just changing the color of the tile or getting rid of it. OK, so that's everything we need to do for the forest and hills 
on the hex type uh, up here. So let's go to our map maker and let's actually generate some. Now with the hills, as I said, they can be anywhere. So we can just generate them when we generate our land masses. Uh, so in generate two now, uh, remember we separated out for uh, from the camera repositioning so that we can generate over and over again without the tiles getting moved around. So let's go in here and whenever we swap a hex, a hex into its planes form, we can also swap some of the hills. And actually, so before we do that, we're going to want our a public float for the hill frequency, not fill, <laughs> hill frequency. And we're gonna set that to uh, maybe 0 0.3. So if it's 0 0.3, um, one th approximately one third of the tiles will have hills. So I'm actually, uh, we don't want this here. We actually want to do this before we swap the type. So we want to do this above. Uh, we also don't need this line of code anymore. That was that alternate method of terrain generation. So let's just get rid of that. And let us say if a random dot value is less than or equal to the hill frequency we set, uh, our new hex is going to get hills. So dot hill is equal to true. And that should do that nicely. Now, the other thing is when we're growing our hill, so uh, our hex types grow function, we actually need to, a way to set the hill frequency on so that we can continue to add hills as the land masses grow. So we're going to want a public float hill frequency here as well. Uh, we'll just put that to zero. We'll go back to this map maker script. And we're also going to tell every tile what our intended hill frequency is. Hill frequency is equal to hill frequency. And now we're going to want to get this code. We're going to copy that, save this, and we're going to go into our grow function, back into grow, and in that same spot. So when we before we swap the type, we set the hill. The reason we're doing that before we swap the type is our function here to tell it, oh, we need to actually update is in the swap type. So if we set hill to true after we do this, uh, it's not going to actually update correctly. Okay, so let's save all that. Let's go back here. And now we need to make our hexes, uh, get them ready. So in our hexes, we're going to drag our hills into our hills uh, and trees into trees. And then we're going to change our hex back to an ocean. So we'll make that an ocean. We will uh, set the alpha value here to zero. I actually click somewhere. And same with the trees in our color, set our alpha to zero so they're invisible. And this is our default state because that's what we generate originally is an ocean. Okay, so let's go back to a scene view, press play, and let's see what generates. All right, so we have hills on a bunch of tiles. It looks like they've shown up correctly. They appear in every terrain type. And now let's try changes. So if we make the hill frequency one, every tiles uh, land tile is a hill. If we make the frequency zero, we shouldn't get any. Okay, so we get none. And again, if like 0.2, we get some hills. And we can then change the value and have whatever we like. There we go. We have hills. So forests are going to be kind of similar, but we're only going to want to generate them on uh, our plains and our grasslands. And in my, my game, I want more force on these grasslands. All right. So adding our forests, we're going to do it in a similar way to the hills. So in our hex type script, we're going to want a forest frequency variable, or in this case, we'll just name it tree frequency because that's easier to type. And then we're going to go over to our map maker and we're going to add in the same thing so we can uh, adjust the frequency of the trees of the forest generations in the inspector. So we'll start with that at point three. So we need to add it in the forest generation in a couple places. So the first place uh, is in the map maker script. So we have the hill frequency here and in the generate two. So in this case, we're just generating the planes. So we're going to copy the hill frequency since we can do uh, the tree frequency now. Now, one thing we want to do with the tree frequency in the case of the planes, I want to be less common. So I'm going to divide the tree frequency by uh, the float of three. Uh, you don't have to do this. It's up to you. But uh, in my case, I want there to be fewer trees on the plains than in the grasslands. So then we'll set the force to true when this triggers. Uh, and then we have to do the tree frequency here. Oh, Got to select that right. And set this to tree frequency. So this will pass through. The other place in this script is actually further down when we're first generating the grassland. So adding the grass, 
we're going to want to have a little bit more uh, uh, more trees than we got on the planes we just generated. Okay, so we can do that here. So we have the swap type here, and then we can just go uh, put it in the middle here, and this will make sure that we swap the type correctly. So uh, we'll change this uh, to hex because it is not new hex. And here to hex. Okay, so it's the same type of thing. We set through the tree frequency that we want. We turn the force to true. And now we want to get rid of this three times uh, divided by three. So this way the trees will be more common on the grasslands. And again, we want to trigger it before the swap type. And we'll do the same thing here. So the two paces are the top and the bottom of the map. And now for the growth on the hex type, again, same type of thing. So we're going into the grow function. And then uh, before we do the swap type, but after we do the hills, we can put in the tree frequency. Um, now, in this case, the grow function is going to be based on the type. So uh, if you are doing the grow function where you're sending through the biomes uh, in the map maker by changing the type, uh, where is it? in your initial generate. So the first method I showed in the last video uh, over here where you swap the type. In here, you would then want to specify uh, the type here. So uh, if type is equal to one, which is our grassland, and random's less than tree frequency. Uh, in this case, it is new hex again. We are back to new hex. Uh, however, in the case of the planes, we want to have that 3f. So the planes are 2 divided by 3f. Now, the one other thing we want is if we just run this script, we're going to be generating some trees uh, in this initial grow function, the generate 2. And when we add on the snow or the deserts, uh, those trees might remain. So one thing we have to do here is we need to make sure that the hex dots um, forest is equal to false when we generate our snow tiles. And then also when we generate our desert tiles in the next function, again, before we do the swap type. So we have it there, we have it in the snow. Uh, oh, and once more in the snow, because the snow, of course, has the top and the bottom. Okay, let's go and let's see if any of that worked. Hopefully it did. Now it's compiling and let's press play. Okay, so look at that. We have these forests that are growing on the plains and more commonly on the grassland. Uh, I don't see any on the snow tiles or on the desert tiles. So that looks like it worked perfectly. Uh, again, we can change up the value. So let's say uh, if we set this to one, every piece of grassland will be a forest and a lot of the plains will be a forest as well, one third of them. So that looks good. That's exactly what we'd expect. Set it to zero and no forests. Look at that. We are done the forests. And again, we have settings we can change in the inspector uh, to get different effects. And so you can make options for the players when they're customizing the map or the game. They'd be able to, uh, you could have sliders that can change the value and do that for you. Okie dokie, so that is the forest. So now we need the mountains. So the mountain, actually, we'll turn that. The mountains we're going to do, uh, similarly to the grow function, uh, if we go in the hex type, we used before. We want to seed a mountain and then we want to grow it. Now we want the growth to be a little bit more linear into mountain ranges instead of uh, just blobs. So the current growth function creates more blob shapes, but we want these sort of more linear ranges that maybe branch off a little bit and change direction once in a while. So let's work on coding that by first copying our initial growth function in the hex type, since we're gonna use most of this code. So let's bring this down. Uh, we're gonna call this grow mount. We're going to have it use its own uh, grow uh, integer. So we're going to call it int growth so that we're the one originally set for the land masses here was already used and we'll just pass in a new one since we're not invoking this. And then we also want an integer for the direction that we're going to try and grow the mountains. So the first thing we're going to modify is so we have the coordinates. We're going to actually limit the coordinates we use for each direction. So for direction zero, we're gonna make that horizontal. So that's just the x plus one, x minus one, and then the regular y's. For direction oh, uh, one, we are going to go for an ang one of the angles. Now, if we look and just encapsulate these two, well, this is minus 0.5 and plus 0.86, and this is, all right, so that's this direction. 
And then plus 0.5 to plus 0.86 is this direction. So that's not linear. So we don't actually want the this guy, the two pluses on the y. So we want the minus 0.5, uh, plus 0.86, and the plus 0.5 uh, minus 0.86. So that will be a diagonal line. So if we look at that, minus 0.5 left, 0.6 up, and then plus 0.5 right, negative 0.6 down. So that gives us a line, and then we'll just use an L statement for the last one, encapsulate these guys, and we have our directional coordinates. So for this, we don't have this frequency anymore. What we're actually going to do is we're going to go less than two because we have two directions, uh, two coordinates for each direction. We don't need this random value here that's going through and checking that. Now, we do want to uh, check or recalculate our coordinates so it wraps around. So we still need this bit of code here. So again, that's the chords. And we're going to make this all end because we're not doing that random value again. OK. Uh, I realized I could have changed this end to an M faster, but whatever. So let's ray trace to the coordinates uh, left and right, or up and then down, or left and right, or up and down the other way. So we check, uh, we hit. If we do, we grab the hex type. If the type is not equal to zero, because zero, of course, is ocean, we want to modify our land. Uh, in this case, though, we need to get rid of the hills and the forests, because both of those uh, should be false on the mountains. They are their own thing. So forest, and we'll set that to false. Uh, get rid of this extra bit of code. We don't need the frequency code anymore because uh, we're not trying to grow that. So we're going to swap to type 4 since 4 is my mountain type. OK, and now if our growth, so instead of grow, we're going to use growth. Minus 1 is greater than 0. Uh, we are going to be passing it along. We can get rid of uh, these guys. Um, well, we can leave the width. That might not be set. And then what we want to do is we sometimes want to change direction. So we're going to say if random dot value is less than 0 0.3, maybe. Uh, so some less 30% of the time, we are going to make a direction equal to uh, a new random dot value. So we need round to integer. And we're going to make this, of course, random dot value times two, just like before, or not before. Uh, so we can generate two directions. We haven't done before yet, because we haven't written the other uh, script. So yeah, we have that. And then we're going to pass through. Uh, we're going to pass through grow mountain. And then we are going to pass in a new growth. So growth minus one, and the potentially new direction. OK, so we take in our growth number, our direction, and then we grow in that direction. Uh, one other thing we can do is to make sure we're not every mountain is the same. Uh, we're going to set this less than about three quarters. We're just going to make sure randomly sometimes the mountains will end a little bit early on this hit. OK, uh, we can also get rid of our old comments and save that. And let's go to the map maker. So now we need to start triggering our mountains. So we're going to do this kind of similarly to uh, the initial generate function. So we're going to make a new function in a second. So add mountains. We're going to invoke it time dot delta time as we have uh, from previous functions. So let's write this function. So add mountains. So we need to figure out how many mountains we should be adding. Now, we shouldn't do a raw number of mountains. If somebody is generating, say, an islands map, like a bunch of small separate islands, that, but they have a large number of mountains, well, maybe there isn't enough land for that many mountains, and basically all the land turns into mountains. It's not like our snow, desert, and grasslands where we're just looking at zones in the map and changing some of the values. In this case, uh, we're going to be seeding it again. So we need an exact number we want to add. So what the first thing we have to do is, is actually uh, figure out how much land we have. So we're going to copy our map size loops from the top of the generate to function and bring that down. Since we've already written this, we also need a counting integer starting at 0. Uh, get rid of our comments. So for that, we, of course, need to correct the position. We're not going to instantiate anything this time. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to count. So let's grab a ray trace. Uh, we already have one. Uh, we can grab all that, bring this in. Now, if we have a hit, uh, we are then going to, we don't need to check this, but 
let's copy this over because we're not going to use this over again. So bring this down, uh, get rid of this hex here. So if this dot type is greater than zero, so it's land, then we want to add to our count. So we'll get rid of that count plus equals one. So our count is going to calculate how much land there is actually on the map. And then our mountain frequency. So the number of seed mountains, uh, did we, we can have a value to uh, set in the public in, uh, interface. So we're going to go with the amount frequency is equal to, I'm setting it to point everything to 0.3 if I can learn to type. Uh, so let's go down and let's figure out. So now if we just take our land area and multiply by that, that's going to be a lot of mountain starts. That's going to be way too many. So let's try something a bit less. So we're going to do a new integer um, mount count. Why not? We're going to set that equal to the mountain frequency we just did. Uh, times our land area we just calculated so the count and then we're going to divide that uh, we're just going to pick 10 for now maybe that's uh, the, a bad value we can find out so let's encapsulate this and then let's round this off to an integer to integer uh, just to make sure we end up with something nice and clean uh, got to spell that right okay so we're going to have a count now this we might have to change uh, how much we divide it by um, in order so that our mountain frequency at one is the maximum amount we would ever want to see on a map. Okay, so now we have to trigger our growth. So that is growing the mountain. So we're going to go uh, the same way we started our generating land masses, which we did here. So we have our, we're going to keep track of attempts and we're going to cut off the loop if we made too many attempts without actually placing all of our mountains. So uh, we have our mountain count and our attempts. So let's change mass temp to mount count here. Okay. Uh, again, old comments. We're going to track attempts. Uh, so we generate a random position, same as before. We correct it, same as before. That's all good. We then try to hit it. Uh, that's great. Now, uh, if it does not equal zero, once again, we only want to generate on land. Uh, for this, we don't want any hills. So again, as with the pre, as with what we did in the grow mountain. Uh, we want to set that to false and then we want to set the forest to false as well. So this will get rid of any hills and forests where the mountains try to spawn. We can get rid of that. Now we swap the type to four. Okay, so now we have to calculate our growth. So, so we're going to need to set a growth value for this. Now the equation I found that actually uh, was kind of interesting. Uh, well, says I ended up being so math f dot seal to int, and then I took a random value uh, dot value and times the size of the map, uh, or sorry, the size of the islands we're trying to grow. So grow dot x, and then divided that by three times the frequency. Uh, so the frequency was set above, and that is in the grow function of the hex type that becomes. You know how many different locations does it pull to grow outward so this uh equation i sort of just stumbled upon by just trying a bunch of different things until something interesting actually worked uh, the other integer we need of course is our direction so we're going to do a math f dot round to round to int random dot value times two okay and then we want to do the new hex grow mountain we're gonna go growth and we're gonna go direction and then we have to go here and take our mount count down by one so let's save that let's go into here and let's run it with the settings we put in and see how that looks okay so our mountain count frequency is set pretty low and we got a few so one two three four five um, looks like five or six so let's set this to one. One would be our maximum amount of mountains we want. And that's actually like a reasonable amount. That's sort of the middle amount we'd want. So we probably want to have about twice that value. So let's go back into here and where we did the count, let's divide this by five instead. Uh, go back here. Do do do. All right, let's give that a shot. So a 0.3, uh, looks, which is, should be a small amount, looks all right. Let's make this one. And that looks like a nice, like a lot of mountains. And we're getting nice linear chains. 
I don't know why that equation works well for the growth. I kind of tried a bunch of different things and it worked just fine. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so let's try like a completely different map size. So like, let's make bigger. So 30 by 70. Uh, let's have uh, lots or fewer, sorry, uh, larger masses. So like 15 by 20 and maybe put the frequency up to four. Uh, again, high mountain frequency. And you can see you got this big Pangea and lots of mountains, but again, still a lot of land between them and ways to get around. If we set this to 0.5, generate, and we get a reasonable amount of mountains, something sort of normal you'd see in a strategy game. Set that to zero, and we get no mountains. There we go. So we have an interesting way to generate uh, mountains that are adaptive to the size of the map and the other settings you put in. So that way you get sort of an appropriate amount regardless of the style of map you're doing. So if you're doing an island where, or a bunch of small islands, uh, we'll see if that turns into a bunch of small islands. Yeah, that sort of does. Uh, we still have a reasonable amount of mountain, reasonable amount of mountains for the map size, like the amount of land we have. We kick that up to one and we have a, quite a lot of mountains. So yeah, there you go. That's how we're generating mountains. So that's all I'm going to do for today. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. As always, please leave a comment if you think there's a better way to do this or if you notice any issues. Anyway, have a good one.